In this episode we are going to install two emergency drains, two vents, we are going to close off uh, one vent and we are going to replace the axle seals. The Tesla large drive unit has multiple chambers that should not contain any coolant or transmission fluid. Local temperature changes cause the air in any chamber to expand and contract resulting in pressure differences. If a chamber has no breather, then expansion can push air from the chamber into the coolant or transmission fluid and contraction can suck in coolant or transmission fluid through seals. This is bad because as you can see there are a lot of seals. Originally the rotor and the inverter uh, share one chamber, vented with only one breather at the inverter over here. In the previous episode the bus bar channel was sealed off with epoxy separating that chamber in two, so now the motor can no longer breathe. This is why a breather will be added to the motor chamber. Next, the hole behind the speed sensor will be closed off and replaced by a breather in a new hole. More about this later. Emergency drain number one will be added to the reluctor wheel chamber for in case the coolant seal fails. Emergency drain number two will be added to the inverter for in case of combined failure of seal, drain and epoxy. Back to the origin, the coolant leak. When the seal leaks, let's say at a couple thousand RPM, the coolant can seep along the entire circumference of the shaft. Next, centrifugal forces will push most of it away from the shaft along the seal and the reluctor wheel, so the wheel acts like a centrifugal pump. The fluid will hit the interior chamber wall all around. Next, gravity will pull most of it to where the drain will be. However, part of the coolant may splatter around and drain into the rotor chamber through this 5 mm hole behind the speed sensor. That's the reason to close it. But again, there can be consequences. There is a reason why this hole is here. Thermal expansion and contraction of the rotor cause the rotor, plus its bearing, to move deeper into the reluctor wheel chamber. This is because the bearing is floating and can move with this spring over here. The bearing on the gearbox side is a locating bearing. It does not have a spring. And so it cannot move with thermal expansion. For this reason, this chamber over here is not vented. Thermal expansion and air heating can result in pressure differences between the motor chamber and the reluctor wheel chamber. These pressure differences are equalized through this hole. When shutting the hole, these differences are equalized instead by air flowing through the bearing seals. This may draw grease out of the bearing, especially at higher temperatures when the grease viscosity is low. This could shorten the life of this bearing. Theoretically, it's also possible that the entire rotor moves quickly, including both bearings. This could require a relatively large hole to quickly equalize pressure differences. However, the maximum possible spring displacement, spring is here, can only be achieved when the car undergoes lateral accelerations of 12 G. Even Formula One cars do not reach that unless in a crash. More realistically, just below 1 G, displacements are less than one tenth of a millimeter, so I think we do not need a large hole. This leaves pressure changes from thermal expansion. These changes are generally very slow, with a time order of magnitude exceeding one second. This means that the airflow rate through the hole is also very low. So I'm going to close the hole and add a watertight membrane breather instead. There's just enough space behind the speed sensor. So that's exactly the same like the inverter already has one. This results in a larger pressure drop across this vent, increasing the chance of breathing through the bearing. However, I deem the pressure drop negligible as long as the membrane here does not get clogged. This is a compromise between leak tightness and bearing life. Maybe just closing the hole would be fine too. The reluctor wheel may also act as a centrifugal pump, air pump, creating a circulating flow, sucking air in through the bearing and pushing it back out through the original hole. Mind you, at 65 miles per hour, it rotates over 7000 RPM. So removing the hole and putting a membrane breather instead may reduce this effect, but this is speculation. In a previous episode, I tried to remove this uh, breather and it broke off the three taps. So I bought a new one at Toyota. So the new one uh, looks like this. There's three taps. So let's mount it. 
There we go. That's done. I drilled a five and a half millimeter hole here to put a breather in. First I wanted to reuse the old breather from the uh, inverter, but if you compare it to a new one, uh, then the old one is really uh, dirty. Also I touched the old one with my finger and uh, this material is probably, the white material is EPTFE, it's extremely fragile if you touch it with your finger. I saw measurements, uh, someone else on YouTube, then the permeability decreases by a factor 10. You do not want that, so that's why I bought uh, the new breathers and they should uh, just leave the protective cap on uh, like this don't take it off don't touch it and then with epoxy I'm going to uh, glue it in there I already tested out the epoxy bonds very well to both the plastic and the cast aluminum also I closed this hole with epoxy drilled a new hole in the center five and a half millimeter uh, I will put in uh, this breather I will cut off the three taps before I do that unfortunately the hole now coincided with the rip over here, so it would have been better to put it slightly eccentric. New breathers are on in epoxy there and there. There's enough space left so that the uh, speed sensor fits in. I checked that. Of course, I uh, kept off the uh, rubber rings from the new uh, breathers, otherwise it would not fit. On the back side, it looks like this. You can check if there's no epoxy blocking the membrane and it's good. Next we are drilling emergency drain hole number one uh, with a metric six. It's a drill and a, a tap in one. You can buy them off Amazon. We're going to drill uh, somewhere in there. And so if you look on the other side, then uh, so we enter there, we'll exit at the black mark. And we have like four millimeters between this surface over here and this surface over here so there's plenty of space for a, for a drain and so this is the metric 6 drain that we put on there and then we can put a silicone hose over there and, and catch the coolant so we're through yeah we ended up there I took a smaller drill bit first two and a half millimeter just to see where we end up next we take the m5 drill plus tap for m6 combination we have a little bit of uh, cutting oil put it on there Slow speed. So let's reverse it. We drilled the hole a little bit too close to this surface so with a Dremel grinder I have to grind a little bit away from this surface otherwise the uh, the, the the hex part of this uh, thing interferes with the surface. Also the thread in here is not pretty at all. It, uh, it is not a good thread at all so I recommend hand threading instead of, instead of using one of these all-in-one tools so maybe it's better instead of using the machine to you do the threading with a tool like this I put an extension between it because uh, most of these uh, threading things are very short and you need the length because uh, this is rotating all around and you don't want the handle to hit this I probably bent the drill too much while tapping the thread. So it's in there right now. So I made some more space with the Dremel and uh, this router bit. I ground away a little bit from the surface. Also, uh, let's see how this fits now. 
there, no interference. I must say, with this, I ground away a little bit of this surface over here, which it doesn't matter. Now it's even more symmetric, so yeah. And then we can put the hose on like this later on. So it seems good so far. Now we have to uh, glue it in. Of course, uh, clean the thread, both of them with uh, acetone or something because there's thread cutting oil in there. I just used a Q-tip uh, all the way until the Q-tip was no longer dirty. So that was the sign that it is clean. Next, I put some Loctite 242 in there to uh, seal it. I put a lot of it in there. And maybe there's a bit too much Loctite in there to prevent it from being clogged. So you just uh, put a hose on there and uh, blow in it. And then you're sure it's clear and just let it cure. Also, I make sure that uh, the C-clip over here has the opening at the bottom. So that if leaking coolant um, collects behind it, it can easily escape to the emergency drain. I took the inverter cover off. We're going to add a second emergency drain. The lowest point is at the center of this hole. Somewhere along this uh, black line we can put it. I chose to put it right here. I can put it closer to the middle of the drive unit, but then it will interfere with the transmission jack. So ideally for that scenario, you want to put it as much as possible here. Uh, however, if you look inside, this is a little bit higher. So the lowest point should be along this aluminum piece here. And then there are some structural beams of the car here, which makes it difficult to access. So this is the the point that is not obstructed by structural beams and also has least interference with transmission jacks or motor jacks. Okay, I pre-drilled it with a five millimeter drill. Now we can take uh, some lubrication and uh, learn from the mistakes and uh, with hands we tap some thread in there more controlled than with the machine I hope I right, have to turn it a quarter back every time to break the, the shrapnel next we're going to deburge a little bit we remove the sharp edges We have to clean the aluminum uh, pieces uh, away because otherwise it's getting into the electronics and that would be bad. For us, the same procedure. Uh, clean it with a Q-tip acetone then glue it with uh, Loctite Blue and we're done. By the way, the internal diameter of this thing is three and a half millimeter. It has been Loctitened in. So we're done and it's pretty flush with the surface. So that's done. Also I replace these seals over here. They seal the axles that go to your wheels. The only reference that you have to put it in place is that this face over here should coincide with this shiny aluminum face over here. On this side it has already been removed and you see there's no other reference than again here this smooth aluminum face with the red marking on it. So I grab this uh, piece of cardboard, put it around the garter ring, and seal, so and then the rubber hammer. There it goes. So first I cleaned uh, the surface, uh, aluminum surface with uh, acetone. And a bit primitive, we again use this cardboard thing over here. And There it is in now. We take uh, the back of the ha little hammer and then we hammer against the head. Very nice.